Well, would you believe it? I'm still alive and I did something. I finished a project. Finally, I actually got around to finishing a project. So this was initially a hand cranked uh, blower thingy for the barbecue and I added a battery and a motor and it works. <laughs> it actually works. Um, well, now it works. It will not work in a few hours when the battery is drained because apparently I did make some mistakes while designing it, building it, whatever. But it works. Um, so, to its features. Well, you have a tiny motor of unknown specification. You have a really bad switch. Um, we have a battery and a handle. And we have charging with USB. We also have a soft start circuit which is under here which I will show in a moment. <clears throat> so now a soft start is necessary because the charging module back here also has overcurrent protection and the motor pulls too much current at startup. So uh, that's why it takes a while after me hitting the button to start. So if I just hit the button repeatedly nothing happens. If I hold it, it starts up. Okay, so now I just reassembled it after charging it um, and I will show you why I had to disassemble it. Well, you see a fan here already, um, so you can probably think about something. Um, so yeah, I'm going to disassemble it and show you the inside. And here we go. Um, took it apart. So you see the protection board which is still oddly warm for no reason. I'll get to this in a second. Battery, solder the connectors to it because there's just no space between those screws. Barely fits in there. Already had to sand off some parts of the screws here and there just so it fits in there. A makeshift switch. I did not have a switch that would fit in this tiny uh, space that's left. Um, so I just went for this method, used a piece of metal and take the wire to it. So yeah. <clears throat> that's the switch. I made a groove in here where it just sticks in. And fun fact, it has a uh, plastic coating apparently. I did not know that, so I had to sand it off inside so it even works. <coughs> Oh, let me just put that back in there. Okay, that's one side. That was supposed to be the initial circuit, nothing else. But then, well, the motor just did this, basically, just a few turns before the overcurrent came in. So, let's look at the very advanced circuitry on this side. We have one resistor, one capacitor, one transistor. Um, that is an NPN Darlington. That's a, what is it, 220? Uh, 220 microfarad at 5 volts, no, 25 volts. And a 3K resistor. Now, the resistor basically charges up the, tra the, the capacitor, and as soon as it's charged up, the, uh, basically, ba the, oh god, the capacitor and the resistor are connected to the base of the transistor and it will slowly turn on well basically in theory and apparently also does it in uh, practice uh, so then the 3.7 volts are getting relayed to the motor just <laughs> it's a very hacky circuit it's also not properly cooled so if you would run this for extended periods of time it would probably overheat but it's just a little blower motor for uh, barbecue stuff so it shouldn't overheat so <clears throat> that was the first problem I had uh, the slow start so I was thinking up and down uh, trying to get around an active circuitry like this uh, I wanted to try out um, an inductor but I would need a one Henry inductor to uh, probably to uh, 
have a slow start with that. And one Henry is probably as big as the entire assembly, and I don't have that. And <clears throat> I tried resistors. Resistors work too, but they got way too hot, and also the motor didn't run that fast anymore. Because it's just 3.7 volts, and this motor is... Right, I have to show you where the motor came from in a second. So the motor is... Uh, Initially was run on 12 volts, which was way too much, I guess, uh, super loud when you run it 12 volts. So I think it's 6 or 3 volts or something in between that it's rated for. So I'm running at 3.7 and it works quite well at 3.7 as you hear. So <clears throat> I think 3.7, 4 volts, something around that is quite nice for the motor. Right, so, I still have a problem. This, this piece of shit. So, I have multiple of these boards, so I'll have to replace it. One thing, uh, you already noticed when you plug it in, there's no light coming off from it. Usually there's two LEDs on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, so, yeah, there's two LEDs. Uh, everyone usually knows those boards. They have a charging IC here at the front and here at the back the protection circuit now <clears throat> this has been sitting for a while ouch it's still hot no wonder the battery is going to get drained let's take a look at it with this camera where you can't see shit oh my god yeah you see this really bright stuff there that's 40 degrees something um so i have to yeah, it's really hard seeing the screen, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it's it's around 40 degrees now, and I haven't touched it, like haven't charged it in a while. So, yeah, that's why the battery is now drained. I don't know why it started doing that. It didn't before. Um, like when I initially soldered it in, nothing happened, no problem. Now it's just draining the battery for no reason. I don't know what's happening and why the LEDs don't work. They should work. I sent it off the corners at the front. That could be the reason, but I I looked at the circuit itself. I don't see why. There's nothing essential in there. I even put some solder on the corners just to make sure the vines are intact. That didn't help either, so I don't know why that thing is draining my battery. Oh well, <clears throat> so I guess I have to replace that and I have to check if I can get it in there without sanding it because if you look at this uh, case, it's obviously rounded and having a rectangular PCB in there and not good. Maybe I also broke it because of flyback from the motor. Who knows? I don't know. So, yeah, I'll get it out of there, check if it then suddenly works. Uh, well, you never know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the current problem I have. This thing is draining the battery for no reason, which is why I had to charge it. Um, I charged it yesterday, came down today, battery was zero volts, completely empty, so I had to recharge it. With this thing, by the way, I, I used this to charge it again. <laughs> that works, so I don't know what's broken. Um, but yeah, I have to replace that, apparently. So, I will now show you where I got this blow motor. Okie dokie, so we have this thing. You might recognize these. Uh, this is the cheapest one I could get on eBay. You see it says 12 volts, 75 volts, uh, 75 watts. And now, if you look at this case, it's pretty big. This one is uh, powered by a cable, 12 volts. Now, we take our tiny blower back here. Hope we don't show it. You see this tiny motor that was in here. They put this tiny motor on 12 volts which was just screaming at me as soon as I turned it on. So I was like, that's not fine, I don't want to use it. The instruction manual said, um, turn it off after 5 minutes of use and let it cool down for 5 minutes because of the tiny motor back there. Yeah, so I thought, that's bullshit. <clears throat> so I have planned something for this. Currently it houses a certain motor that's a bit bigger. 
you see this is the motor you would actually inspect in here something around this size the thing is this probably needs 48 volts to have enough speed to build any pressure because I can run it at 12 volts which I will do in a minute and yeah <laughs> it's just not enough it's not even enough at 30 volts at the um, lab PCU it's just too slow because it's a uh, voltage based the, the speed is voltage based so I probably have to pump 40 or 50 volts in there um, and I don't yet know how I will do this because yeah it's also at a certain amperage that's needed by the way the cables and switch are original I just used those from what was left after I took out this one <clears throat> so yeah I'm gonna hook this up to 12 volts and show you how it uh, chooches okie dokie I have it hooked up to this power supply now which is by the way a computer power supply that I just put on a nice front so you could actually plug banana plugs in there thing is I don't have banana plugs so I just <laughs> they're also s for screwing stuff in yeah that doesn't really work with this piece which is the leftovers from the 12 volt plug so I will just attach this test it here and you hear the motor already so yeah there's not much action and quite a lot of rattling let's try it without the cover there you see it's going instantly to one speed and staying there a bit like an induction motor the thing is when trying to put this fan thing on a bigger shaft I mutilated it a bit let me try to get that off oops so yeah you can see inside here it doesn't look properly I probably also have to I <laughs> yeah there was a wall here which I will probably also uh, so I, I removed it so I can use a bigger fan which I hope <laughs> might provide more pressure but probably not or at least a new one that's a tiny bit bigger so just press this on you see it's wobbling because it's so fucked up let's see okay that's still making noise without yeah you can't even see that but yeah it works <laughs> it's actually a uh, motor from a printer uh, that I salvaged so <laughs> And you see also did a lot of things to the part where the motor sticks through so it could go in there I don't know if I will ever finish this <laughs> because I need some some way to make 12 volts to 50 volts and yeah there are those step up things but they usually only go to 35 volts which is not enough because at 35 it's still not enough to actually provide much pressure uh, it's like a nice blower fan to blow in your face <laughs> but not enough to inflate anything um, so yeah that's a project for another time so now the only thing left is taking this overheating piece of shit off um, putting a new one in there and hoping it doesn't break too maybe checking why this one does overheat because it's the chip that's getting hot it's not like parts of where I sand it off the stuff so I don't know what's going on also the LEDs not being lit is, is another reason the first time I charged it before it didn't um, ch uh, drain the battery the first time I charged it I let it in the case and then I touched the case and I was like oh boy that's pretty hot so I unplugged it and just let it sit and a few hours later I tried to use it and it was just dead, didn't move. Well apparently maybe that over temperature killed it, but it's supposed to have a thermal throttling inside, which I don't know didn't work. So yeah I don't know <laughs> what to do. Um, I don't want to uh, have this module outside of the thing. So I don't really know what to do here yet. Anyway, we finally have a finished project. 
that actual finished project that kinda works. There might be more projects in the future if I have the time. Uh, I didn't have much time for a longer period now and also no access to my uh, to my workbench. As you see I do have a new workbench now. Um, even with the nice uh, whatever you call these things in the back so it can't wobble to the side it's fairly solid now I still have to balance it so because you see there's a lot of light coming in from the top so I just have to put something under there and I have my new workbench yeah that's basically it <coughs> we got a project and there might be more to follow so see ya